adaptation, I will show you how to do simple effect analysis for two factors repeated measures ANOVA. The example that we will be using is uh, uh, from the research that uh, looked effectiveness of poster adverts but assessing the response time for target stimuli to identify the brand or a product. Two different display types were used uh, with four different display sizes. Uh, size 2, 4, 6 and 8 elements. Six participants were used in the study with each participant providing an average response time for each of the 2 by 4 um, i.e. 8 conditions. So we have data um, and each participant provided 8 responses. It's fully within participants design. The first factor display type is within participants. Uh, the second factor display size is also within participants. So let's have a look how the data looks in SPSS. So when we enter the data, what we can see, our six participants and each participant provide display one size two, display one size four, display one size six, and so on. So firstly, to do the analysis, uh, that involves uh, also four steps. So first we check the assumptions, then we run the repeated measures ANOVA. And then, if interaction is significant, we perform a simple effect analysis. And of course, descriptive statistics is also accompanying inferential statistics. So, four steps in total. Uh, so, to test the distribution of your dependent variable, which is one of the assumptions for repeated measures ANOVA, as well as screen for outliers, we'll go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and Explore. Um, Let's reset it. Uh, so we have all our variables in here and we select them all and just place it in the dependent list. So the dependent variable under each uh, level of each factor is in the list. So we go to statistics and select outliers and we go to plots and select histogram and normality plots with tests. Press continue and press OK to run the analysis. Okay, here we go. So let's go to the start of the analysis. What we have six participants and we have no missing values. In descriptive statistics, that's where we're going to start looking at skewness and kurtosis. So skewness and kurtosis are a bit deviating, but uh, um, not that far away from uh, a normal distribution for each of our variables. So now let's look at the tests of normality and as we can see both Kalmagoros, Smirnov and Shapiro-Wilk um, indicate that the result is not significant which means that the distribution of our variables is not different from the normal distribution i.e. we can conclude that our variable is relatively normally distributed according to this test. So first skewness and kurtosis didn't flag up any problematic cases and now test of normality also confirm that the variable is relatively normally distributed. Let's have a look at the histogram. So this one looks relatively normal. Uh, and in, But in here what we have is SPSS flagged two values as outliers. Looking at the histogram and results of all other tests, we can see that these outliers do not have an impact on the distribution of the variable and they are also identified by 1.5 uh, uh, rule which means uh, um, some researchers argue that uh, um, it's too conservative uh, and those values that are identified at 1.5 rule is, are not really outliers. So we'll keep them for now. Uh, this variable also seems to be relatively normally distributed, much better spread of scores. This one relatively normally distributed, no outliers. Uh, this one is a bit skewed uh, towards the higher values. 
but there's still no outliers and this one a bit skewed to the negative side but uh, um, still no um, outliers. It's normal to see these strange distributions because um, we have very very small data set. It's only six people so it's like one person in here and it looks uh, super weird. Um, but uh, overall if we had a larger sample um, we wouldn't have the problem uh, uh, with the distribution looking a bit funny. Uh, if this sample was for about 20 people um, our distribution would look very normal. Uh, and this one is also quite okay and this one okay two people in here one one so it's it's likely to be normal when we have a, li a larger sample so we'll conclude it's quite normally distributed no outliers this one um, again skewed but still relatively normal uh, no outliers. So we are quite happy. We conclude that there are no outliers that need to be deleted from the data because they have an adverse impact and we conclude that our variable is relatively normally distributed. Now the last assumption we have is a sphericity assumption and that is tested as part of the analysis and uh, um, descriptive statistics, the one step that we need to compute next, uh, can also be computed as part of the um, repeated measures ANOVA. So let's proceed to that one. So if we go to analyze uh, um, general linear model uh, repeated measures. And what we have in here, we'll need to write uh, the name of the factor. So our first factor is a uh, dis uh, display type. And display type, we have two display types, so it has two levels, so we add it. And the next factor is display size, and we have four different sizes, so four levels. And now we go to define. Okay, and here we can see that 1 and 1, uh, 1 and 2, 1 and 3, 1 and 4, so all these perform to the one level of the first factor and, the, and all four levels of the second factor. And our data is laid out in exactly the same way. So display 1 in 1, display 4, 1 and 2, uh, display 6, size 6, uh, display 1, 3, 8 and uh, so on. So we basically just check that we correctly position our variables for factors and levels. So the next thing we want to do is we want to draw a plot. Uh, and uh, it's good idea to put the factor with the most levels on the horizontal axis. So we have display size with uh, four levels, go to horizontal um, axis and display type will go to separate lines. We add the graph and we'll keep it as a line graph because interaction is easier to visualize uh, uh, with the line graphs and we are particularly interested in interaction. Continue and the other thing we need to uh, options and we need descriptive statistics. Descriptive statistics always need to accompany inferential statistics. Continue and OK. So here is our main result. Uh, this is just a repeated measure ANOVA. So we have our means, our standard deviations, also um, our factors and, and their respective levels. What we're interested in the next table is much less test of sphericity. And we see result is not significant. Uh, for two levels, so if the factor has only two levels, the significance is not reported, so we just assume that there is a sphericity. So if you only see the dot, you assume that there is a sphericity. Uh, and here is our main uh, table with the output. So we have display type, uh, which is significant. Uh, we have display size, which is significant. Uh, and uh, most importantly, we have a significant interaction. 
So because uh, we have display type that is significant, only have two levels, we can already at this stage conclude uh, with which display size participants found information faster and in which display size they found it slower. Uh, so with which display type they found it faster, which found they slower. Uh, with the display size is a bit tricky because we have four levels. So if this result is significant, the next step um, would be is also look at the simple um, uh, at the pairwise comparisons. Uh, now, what we're interested in this video in particular is to look at the interaction. So our interaction is significant. So uh, display type affects how people uh, find how fast people find information depending on the display size. So uh, let's have a look how the plot looks like. So what we have is uh, very little difference for the display type one. Uh, but there is quite substantial increase in time it takes participants to find information with the display type 2. Um, so now to analyze this data and perform simple effect analysis, we just need to look um, um, either at the differences in display size uh, 1 between display types or display size 2 between display types uh, or display size 3 between display types, yeah? Uh, but uh, we can also look if there is a, a significant difference in responses across the display 2 and across the display 1. So let's do it this way. We'll first look at the display uh, 1 at the blue line to see if these variations that don't look to be big are significant or not. And then we'll look at this variation to see if it's significant or not. To do that, we'll just need to perform a simpler analysis, simpler ANOVA. We'll just run uh, two ANOVAs, each ANOVA with one factor. So if we'll go to Analyze, uh, re General Linear Model, uh, Repeated Measures, let's reset it. And now our first factor, because we are just analyzing display type for display size, um, we only have one factor, which is a display size with four levels. So um, let's have a look. Uh, DT1 display size. Uh, and it has four levels. Add and define. Come on. Eh, very good. So, and now we'll just put all our um, um, variables that belong to the display type 1 across different sizes. So, we're just doing one factor repeated measures ANOVA. Uh, plots, we don't really need to plot them because it's just one uh, uh, factor and plots are not really interesting at this stage. Um, options, we still want our descriptive statistics, although we do have them from the main analysis, but you don't want to scroll up and down when you can much easier find relative inf relevant information. Um, and continue. Okay, so what the results shows us is that the sphericity is assumed and we are happy, uh, and uh, uh, that uh, display size uh, has uh, no main effect on time it takes participants to find information uh, when they're viewing it on a display type 1. So nothing changes, just what we would expect to see from the graphical representation of the interaction. So what we will do next is we'll go to Analyze, uh, General Linear Models, Repeated Measures, and uh, we change our factor. So um, now we're only looking at the display type 2, display size, and it has four levels. Add, define. 
And the reason why I'm writing DT1, like you don't have to, but for me to remember that I have, that this output belongs to display type one and the next output belongs to display type two. Because once you do the analysis, it's very easy to get confused uh, what uh, different thing um, uh, notations stand for. So it's always good to have some form of indication, either add titles to your SPSS output or make sure within the variables it's quite clear for you to remember later what you have analyzed. Okay, let's um, remove our old ones and we'll put our new ones. Uh, and options, we want descriptives. Yeah, they're selected. Okay. So this is for our display type 2 only. And again, sphericity is assumed, so we're quite happy. And when we looked at the display sizes within display 2, uh, display type 2, uh, the difference is significant. So we can see that display type affects how fast people um, find relevant information depending on the size of the display they are looking at. And this is how you understand or this is how you explain the nature of your interaction. So basically, the size doesn't matter if you present information on a display type 1, but size does matter when you present information on a display type 2. So this is the verbal, um, so this is the information that you need to report um, when you explain the results or the findings. And um, this is basically it for um, identifying uh, or to performing uh, a simple um, effect analysis for to examine um, statistically significant interactions.